We are back with week five in our Pittsburgh Steelers online user franchise, and you know I uh, get going when I see that breakout. It is probably the best thing you could see in a franchise, like over everything. Like even if you could draft like some really good hidden development trade rookie, the breakout is still better. It's still better. It's you know I don't care. I don't care. I'm not arguing it. Of course, going against the Bills, who are one and three so far, 85 overall. That quarterback feels unstoppable. We'll see what happens there. Let's take a look at the players of the week. Some really good quarterbacking games and some DBs getting their hands on some balls. Yeah, I said it. Of course, I think, even though I didn't actually make that change yet, I think Carson Strong is starting this week. I know he had two interceptions last week, but I just I just like the throw power. I, I just feel more comfortable with him. If he doesn't work out, I don't know what to do. Like, we can still trade for Zach Wilson. He hasn't been traded for yet, but... That sense of pressure worries me. Offensive line is still in shambles. We have, like, no time to throw. Fryermuth had a great game, and, of course, so did uh, Calvin Austin. Hopefully, it's Calvin Austin, because I don't think I'm getting Pickens 150 yards with this freaking O-line and this quarterback. Defense has been improving, I suppose, uh, but, yeah, that, that Browns game is still lingering. We got ran over, trampled on. Any words you can think of, it happened to us. The Bills have no injuries, and I don't remember them trading anyone or for anyone, so the team is going to be pretty much as follows. Look at the damn running backs, though. I know they're not the highest overalls in the world, but very, very fast, and the juke move is really high for some youth, specifically James Cook. Uh, as far as wide receivers go, obviously Stephon Diggs is going to be so hard to cover. Gabe Davis is kind of like a mini Stephon Diggs in the sense that you know, he's got very similar ratings. He's just a little bit on the less developed side. He's also a little bit taller in fairness. Uh, but wide receivers, a bunch of, uh, you know, not great players after that, but still the top two are better than our top two by a mile. Dawson Knox is super fast. Gre left tackle is amazing. Left guard's okay. Center's okay. Right guard's iffy. And then right tackle is really bad. Uh, as far as left end goes, Greg Rousseau has 88 finesse move or power move and 82 block shed. So running the ball might be tough. Von Miller, obviously the <laughs> tough man he is. And normally I don't look at the abilities, but I think I probably will this time because uh, there's a lot of abilities on this Bills team, and I kind of want to see what I'm getting into. I mean, Matt Milano's great. Edmonds is great. Bernal's an okay speed guy with good change of direction. The cornerbacks are solid. You know, you got Kyrie Elam, who's 6'2", 93 speed. He's got three corners that would all be CB1 on our team, which is really super fun. Both of the safeties are 90+. plus. This is a team that year one is very good. Maybe a year from now or two years from now, they you know, they drop a little bit with some of the you, you know, the age you know, Von Miller and the safeties, but that isn't right now. That is, uh, <laughs> right now is a problem. But I suppose let's get into this breakout, hoping it's Calvin Austin, like we said, and oh, this is a lot to ask for. I didn't even think he was a wide receiver, but apparently EA thinks that Pat Fryermuth. That threw me off. Yeah, that threw me off a lot because, uh, I mean, it kind of says breakout wide receiver, right? It's... He's, he's kind of not. He's like probably the furthest thing from a wide receiver. He's literally a giant, slow-ish tight end. Uh, as far as what he's going to look to do is Josh Allen bench because Case Keenum's here. All of the numbers are kind of bad, but the pass yards are decent. So try to make it hard on him to pass to force him into the run, I guess, with our really good front, even though we got destroyed by the Browns. But that's like the best rush unit in the league. Uh, and then as far as what we want to do, I guess throw it medium is kind of my focus every week. And these are my focus players. And even though Deontay Johnson isn't playing, he has himself an upgrade. What do you unlock at 85? So outside apprentice is cool. Slot apprentice, I suppose. Uh, physical from mid out. So physical would be great. Slot omatic. If Calvin Austin develops quickly, maybe he becomes, you know, Deontay becomes the slot because even though Calvin's small, he's really fast, so he can stretch the field. Uh, but it seems like you can't really do a whole lot. I guess Slotomatic is really solid, so I, I suppose. Oh, we can't even get to slot, can we? Like, what does Deep Threat give you? Like, there is none for Deep Threat at 85, so I might as well just go with slot and try to catch up with that. 83 overall, which means that everything else went up to 83. This is now 82, and his speed upgrade for Deontay Johnson, which is a massive upgrade for pretty much every position in the game. Levi Wallace, he doesn't really play, but, you know, slot upgrades, you never know. Skim some injuries, and he gets a plus two to speed here. Uh, could you imagine? A really good upgrade, though. Uh, what is his age? He's 27. I've put them on the, the block, but no one's really made an attempt because, you know, 90 speed is pretty mid. 
And then Edmonds, his zone coverage is actually a lot better than I would have thought at 79. I'm going to keep uh, run support just because 12 KXP is a lot to upgrade, and run support's an okay upgrade. You know, plus two to tackle, one to zone, one to press. I don't mind those. You know, that's fine. All right, so obviously the number one focus of every game is to win that game, but I do not remember if I've ever had a superstar tight end in this league, and... I kind of want to have that happen, you know? I think O.J. Howard, I tried so many seasons, but they never had the the tight end dev up, so that never happened. Uh, Irv, obviously, we were, I mean, we were trying. We were doing all right, but he had, you know, an injury, so he was never going to get an end of the season one, and, you know, it is what it is, but three touchdowns. That's probably the best way to get it. 150 yards was a bit of a fluke last week. You know, half of the yards that he got on 168 was on a 75-yarder that was just blown coverage. I don't think you're going to get blown coverage from 290-plus safeties. That's just my understanding, uh, but let's not focus about offense as we are on the defensive side of the ball right now. I left the running back open. He's going to take that shot, and with Josh Allen's throw power, he will hit it, and Shakir will slip it to the 42-yard line on the very first throw, getting him 37 yards. That took a long time to develop, and our guy still couldn't get in there. It's a really bad right tackle, so... You would think J.J. Watt would be feasting in this one. Really good job off the edge there uh, from a cornerback even, which is not a super common sight. Troy Pride, a guy that obviously playing for a long-term roster spot. Josh Allen already in the zone. Must have been an elite handoff that he just had there. <laughs> he didn't have it on the play before. And no outsiders, I think, working well there. I didn't see it light up, but you would think that was no outsiders. Got to worry about Josh Allen's speed, though, which is really not fun. Not a huge fan of that. Troy Pride going against that side. And we're going to get... Oh, it's my fault. He uh, made a really bad read, but, you know, if you're going to force... Oh, his right tackle's injured now. If you're going to force the ball in, and I'm not expecting it, it's going to work out. You know, I was all over that. I did play it maybe a little shallow because I thought he was going to take the deeper option. That <sighs> wasn't a really good read at all, but it works out. Prison 10 from the 25 yard. If, if Watt can't kill this right tackle this game, I give up. Oh, that's wide open. Oh, he went to the other guy. He's also wide open. Really good tackle by Mathis. We are getting diced alive here. He ran it twice in a row, did nothing, and on third and long, he converts. And that could be a read option. It's not. Josh Allen had a hezzy on him. It could have actually been a read option. It was actually inside zone. Like, I can't use her. I can't use her, TJ Watt. Like, that, he's way too good. I'm stuck on Leal. Oh, Devin Bush, please. I will be honest. I'm very proud of him for actually making the stop on that play because I thought that was open as well. That, that would have been my read as well. If he would have maybe waited a second longer, he probably hits it. But that's my read as well if I'm him. And uh, Devin made a really good play. Just didn't get the damn ball. And this will be a run. It's a really good play to run it on. But a huge hit from Edmonds puts it at the one. He's got a decision to make now. And honestly, I think you have to run goal line unless he has like five wide receivers out there. Because this should be a go for a situation. He's going to kick a field goal, it seems. Interesting. This would be a hell of a stand if he actually kicks this field goal. Which, I mean, a fake field goal in any sort of the sport, probably not a good idea. Took three minutes off the clock, dicing us up. Run game, like we said, though, not super great. So that's something to kind of build off of. You know, we were on a couple of plays there, you know, where we actually had a chance to get the stop, and we just missed it by an inch. You know, my user playing a little bit too cautiously. I think at that point I probably needed to just take a shot on someone and just be like, okay, we're just going to bait on it. You know, I'm going for him. But first and ten, obviously, Fryermuth early on. I want to see if we can get anything to him. And, oh, my God, Calvin Austin with a great play, though. And Calvin Austin utilizing that speed, please. Pickens, Calvin Austin, do not get injured. Obviously, in this game specifically, also, Fryermuth do not get injured. But, uh, in general, wow, that was a close call. I thought it was a drag across. And as soon as I threw it, I was like, wait a minute, this ain't no damn drag. Puka Williams is in. I mean, you can't really do much with Fry there. I'm going to run it. Puka. And there's some room. Holding right bumper. Holding right bumper. I have learned outside of Najee or Fryer, I'm probably not going to go for, like, juke moves or truck moves. I'm just going to go down. Safety against Fryer. I think it's a safety. It looks like a safety. And that is a force throw anyways. 
Not even close on the throw in general. Yeah, I mean, if he's got superstar safeties on Fryer, it could come down to just jump balls. Like, look at this. He's got the safety against him every play. That is not good. And another missed throw. No freaking pressure. Come on, Carson. We can't have this, bro. I can't go back to pick. <laughs> you can't do it to me, Carson. You have potential. Believe in yourself. You're freaking handsome as well. Oh, he actually got that. That was a force for me. Because obviously it's Fryermuth on his scenario. He was a little out of position. I angled that to the right. It was actually a really good throw considering. And uh, yeah, a couple of missed throws really hurt us on that one. TJ Watt not messing around, but we missed by an inch. And his guy auto hurdling into a player could have cost him on that one. First drive, zero yards of Fryermuth. The way he's playing him with a safety on him that's like a superstar. Outside of touchdowns, he's not getting it. He's 100% not getting it. And I know I'm focused on it, but, like, that's kind of the whole point. I mean, I brought the entire house. Like, I need somebody to get in there. Like, considering it was a check down, he actually took a long time to get that ball off. And there goes Edmonds. Great play by us. Made the read. I think we actually had to cover that running back, too. But thankfully, didn't have to worry about it as we just came with uh, Edmonds on the, uh, the free release. It's tough coverage. He's probably going to look to throw it inside. And there goes Damari Mathis jumping the ball. Damari Mathis trying to take it all the way. And he gets it for the pick six. Don't get me wrong. I would have loved to fall down at the one and, and throw it to Pryor there. But I can't. I can't. I got to take it. Got to keep it realistic. And I got to take it. Now I wish it was damn Damari Mathis who had the scenario. Because he would have just got it on that. To be fair, if he was a superstar, he would have got it on that. That's two and one. Is that two tight ends? So that... No, it's actually not. It's like a sweep. I don't know what the hell. Is that a manual freaking... Oh, there goes TJ. There goes TJ. A loss of six. He's really bad in the pass uh, rush department today, but his run defense has been on point. I mean, look at him go. I mean, he's just insanity. Pure insanity. We go to Edmonds because there's three guys on this side. This isn't a great look for us. Take it. Take it. And there goes Edmonds with the pick. And we will have a chance to return it. Get the block. Get out of my way, Damari. Oh, Damari's like, I can only be I can be the only one with a touchdown today on defense. Oh, that's a good play, though. There we go. Usered it all the way. I was hoping he would take it. He did, and that is some yardage. And he misses the throw. Oh my god, Carson! I literally... Oh my god, dude. I, I don't know. I don't know. He was okay last week. That first throw he made was really solid. <sighs> but I might have to put freaking Pickett back in, bro. He's not manually using that. And that. I mean, that is all over it. That's just a force. I mean, like, I literally, like... It's like the first throw is so bad. And then the other, la other drive, the second throw is so bad... And then I have nothing going for me on third down. I need to run it more, probably. And I mean, like, it's just... I don't know what to do with this quarterback situation. I think Carson Strong gets one more drive. If he can't throw even, like, a basic route, you know, I'll be able to use pretty good discretion. Like, the last one, we were thrown into coverage. The, the block sucked. Stuck on Edmonds. And he will throw it underneath with pressure in his face. Josh Allen missing a throw. Right, a lot of possession changes in this one early. Oh, come on. I sold. I mean, we kind of are confusing. If this is an inside handoff, though, I got to run over because we are in some trouble. Please. There goes Edmonds again. He forced it right to us. Two interceptions with Edmonds. Easy clap. Edmonds is making a statement today. I mean, I'm just throwing it up. Like, even if I wasn't trying to force it to Fryer, like, I literally have nowhere to go with the ball anyways. I don't want to run Fryer into Calvin because I think Calvin Austin's in a good spot here. Oh, there we go. Perfect throw. There goes Fryer down to the three. Finally getting him involved. Hits the perfect touch pass with him right on it. Can't hit a simple regular throw. No movement or anything. 
What a disaster. Uh, I don't know if I like it. And there goes Fryer. Back of the end zone, one of three. He could do it. Question is, can Carson do it? Because it isn't just about, like, who can give us the best chance to win. It is also about who has the best chance to develop. And with 86 throw power picket, missing throws anyways, at least if you get Carson Strong, maybe the luckiest breakout scenario in history gets the star dev and, you know, gets, like, 10K, 20K XP because of his overall. Who freaking knows? You know, because his overall has dropped quite a bit because of awareness. So... You know, if you don't get a whole bunch of awareness upgrades, which you usually don't as a quarterback, his overall might actually be a help. Because awareness, I don't think, really matters for a quarterback in the game. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yep, there's that. Did he not get it? Okay, I was about to say, that was that was like a tactical not get if he didn't. 17-3, to a really good start for us against this Bills team that, I mean, out the gate was smoking us down the field. Defense has definitely tightened up since then, and we've gotten three interceptions on another really elite quarterback. Edmonds with two interceptions already. Maybe going to go for number three. Maybe a player of the week and then a breakout. Who knows? And outside quick. Smart decision. Huge hit on the fullback who is very fast in fairness. Good decision. Try to get that shorter. He's definitely taking too long to make these reads, which is allowing us to kind of key in on the reads themselves. And we brought the blitz, which was in fairness the play, but... Maybe should have dropped back. The drags are killing us right now on this drive. A little bit of blitz blitz blitzage. Really good tackle with Devin Bush there gaining a yard. He's running the ball a lot. I don't know if James Cook has a scenario, but, you know, I didn't really pay attention to his numbers with the running backs, but I don't feel like he runs the ball that much compared to throwing, and especially since early in this game that's the way it went. So maybe he has a scenario too, and we're both just forcing it. And there goes Edmonds for a third. Edmonds in for the touchdown. Player of the week. He must have a scenario. He just forced it right to Edmonds. A game for the ages. And he's going the wrong way. Edmonds in pursuit. Stops him for a gain of nothing. Four interceptions early in this game. Give me Josh Allen, please. I would love him. Bolden near the line of scrimmage. You've got a lot of safeties in, so if he runs at a straight up, other than Hayward just waiting for him. We're in an okay spot. Oh, I got blocked off by my own guy. James Cook gains about eight. Can't tell me he doesn't have a James Cook scenario. Oh, those routes sucked. Oh, he missed him. He missed him, and he's fourth and inches. Gabriel Davis was open. Now, I'm going to try not to do the thing you guys do and be like, oh, look at... 17 12 in the video wide open because it is so much different when you're actually playing you know i'm kind of like running around the field generalizing routes whereas he's looking at the pressure and all that stuff yeah that is uh that is a rough miss though simply put that's my fault and look at fitzpatrick covering two routes the hero pickens going against edmonds that's not even Edmonds. What am I saying? Oh, what? Bro. Bro, how is that picked? Pickens is taller. Uh-oh. Um, please? Damari? Good tackle. Bro, how is that picked? Like, honest to God. How? At first, I was like, eh, maybe not the greatest read, but, you know, the size, whatever. Left the tight end wide open over there. Really good tackle by Troy Pride. Like, 6-3 Pickens didn't even jump. Again, I, I honestly don't know what the hell is wrong with the animations in this game. I knew where he was going to go with that, but I got caught. Got caught by that guy. I was trying to get off the press, and it actually kind of hurt me. Which is not fortunate. Not fun. Oh, I thought I had the bait. Edmonds and man coverage getting destroyed. And we are getting locked up. Troy Pride, really good tackle off that edge, defending it well. I try not to use her Miles Jack. Oh, that's a really bad read again, dude. That's a really bad read again. That should have been pick number five at the half. My linebacker just didn't jump it because linebackers don't know what to do in this game. Linebackers are basically just liabilities. 
And we've got some pretty good athletic beasts. Like, even Miles Jack, maybe not the fastest, like, probably, like, 86 speed, but his change of direction is is tippy top tier. I'm going to drop Bolden. Edmonds hopefully covers his guy. And there goes TJ finally waking up. Time out us. I know it's pretty uh, high of a score, but it's a Bills team that I wouldn't trust. Devin Bush drop off. This is tough because I have to kind of make it look like I'm covering 13, but I'm going to chase over this side. And that, I mean, I can't, I, oh my god, Minka just killed his own guy. I couldn't do any better than that. You know, I forced the chase on that side, and I got over to the streak in time. I don't know what all the other AIs are doing on that. Like, they're just not covering. Back of the end zone. Josh Allen's a good quarterback, but I wouldn't risk that throw with anybody. Good decision. Edmonds to the outside. I feel like he's definitely keen in on something over the middle, so I'm actually going to go with Devin Bush. Press, digs, jump back over to Knox. I think that's the best call. Oh, he ran both in the inside, and they ran into each other. Blown play by me, and his guys killed themselves. Oh, wow, that's a rough one. Miles Jack on the drop. We really don't have the talent to cover slants. We really don't. And outside, one-on-one, -on -one, perfect coverage. Devin Bush will stop him. I know he's down, you know, in a bad situation here on fourth and goal, but... Oh, man, a field goal here for him is rough to have to accept. It's really rough, especially if with a minute five we do something. Who the hell am I even talking about here? Perfect coverage, really good user by him as well. That user D-line threw me off. Calling a timeout there, interesting. Interesting to say the least. We'll see if that benefits him or not. I don't like any of these plays, by the way. Oh, that's nice. The audible off bench is nice. Preston always throws me off. He's so big. He literally looks like Pat. And I have no time to throw. Come on, Puka. Like, he just lets him walk by, bro. It's crazy. That's pretty good. Of course, drops it. I mean, like, it's just... What can I do? <laughs> just, I mean, he just drops it. I would have punted it anyways, but, like, can anything go my way, please? No? Okay. Of course, on top of it, no kick bar, which is great. So we go from a running back just letting the guy walk by on a, on a rush to a dropped catch from Pickens, who's a possession receiver, to not having a kick bar. Fun stuff. Then we have Minka hit-sticking the wide receiver, phasing through him, and gaining extra yards. I'm surprised he didn't score a touchdown there. And there's some nice room. Good hit. Timeout from the three. I'm going to use her on digs. I don't care about anyone else's route. It's it's obviously a throw. Some sort of play action could be a corner shot to digs. And that, I mean, like, his guy catches it, my guy drops it. Who was in tighter coverage there? Me or his guy? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying, dude. That's all I'm saying. Can't throw it. And my guy drop. And, and he, f he fumbles. He actually fumbles. And can't hit to Fryer because we're under pressure all game long. It's only the Bills roster. Got to help that roster as much as possible. How, how else are you going to win with that roster? Man, I mean, look at, like, like... <laughs> He almost just dove him completely out of the play. Great blocks and a loss of two. Also doesn't help that we have literally no time to throw. Fryer Muth. Nice stiff arm. He dives early. It saved him, but... Four for 14. I mean, Carson has been teetering on this... Losing the starting job role all day today. He's close. He's been close. Fire move on the streak. Outside press and should be open. I guess not. It's my fault. We're still in like squiggly freaking mode as well. And then we miss the throw again. It's picking time, I guess. 12 throw power quarterback time. Is that Calvin Austin on the outside? The safety doesn't come up to help. You never know. And he holds on! 
everyone, it's Calvin Austin! He's him! I get, like, trying to trick your defense, but, like, can we not have TJ Watt in coverage, like, half the game? There goes TJ. Oh, wow. Yeah, no outsiders, huh? Except for the fact that he gave up the outsiders. And then TJ, uh, or not TJ, uh, Devin Bush forces the fumble. Somehow the tight end's perfectly there. Not saying we need a break because we are up 11, but you know, as far as who's had more breaks this game, that would have been nice for us to get one, not going to lie. And there goes another stop, gaining nothing with James Cook, who has 15 carries in this one. Luckily for him, though, uh, running back scenarios are a bit easier to get than tight ends, so I'd imagine he'll end up getting it anyways, but still. Obviously, he's looking for some sort of quick throw here. That was so good a coverage by me on that tight end. But unfortunately, Diggs on the outside did get open. Kind of giving them the, uh, the over the top here. Great coverage by us. Could take the shot. Doesn't get the time, though. And Highsmith, I forgot he was on the team. What a play. He's been so trash all year. And the one time he gets a pressure is against freaking Deion Dawkins. I don't get it. Please, Highsmith, tell me. What's your story? Like, where actually has he been? DJ Watt dropping back again. And he won't get the ball. He will get it off because that is... Like, that's Josh Allen. Like, how does he get that ball off? Josh Allen's a freak, man. Oh, I'm stuck in the line with Joseph. Oh, I made a really good play, though. And that's a good find. And because I dove early... Good job, Devin Bush. Oh, man. I almost made a play on the double team with uh, Linval. It's a hell of a play. Right, Edmonds? We've slowed down a bit with you. And we've got two guys running into each other. Huge hit by Minka. Come on, Damari. That's on you, Damari. You should be up there sooner in that flat look. Devin Bush is overplaying all game long. That throw power from Josh Allen, though, fitting that in easily. Good defense. Gaining nothing with Hines. We try to jump back on Diggs last second. That's a hell of a freaking turnaround, though. And Linval making a great job there, gaining nothing, trying to get all his backup carries in in one go here, it seems. And, of course, another catch with a guy on him. Another catch with a guy right on him. Pickens can't catch one. God, I need to trade Pickens. He's, he's just not him for me. He's just not. Run committing hard on this one because it's first and goal. Although it is Hines. Yeah, he's not going to run it. And I, I literally played that perfectly. I actually don't know what happened. Like, wh what happened? I was on him. I covered it perfectly, and then something stopped my guy. Did I get run into by the other route, maybe? I didn't really pay attention to that, to be fair. Could be a run. I was on that. I was literally on that perfectly. I don't, I don't honestly know. I really don't know how that happened. Oh, good play, good play. This has been a hell of a game, let me tell you that much. Super fun. I only should have like 55 picks this game. I'm surprised we even have the ones we have. And where, how is he in the momentum? We're up by three. Like maybe a little, but not that much. Come on, man. Double drag, he has the insides covered a little bit here. That's a really good throw to Fryer. Gets it for a gain of 14. Pick it two for two so far. We would actually get Mike Tomlin fired in real life. <laughs> He's putting all these different quarterbacks in only to just put his guy right back in. Pick it. And there goes Najee. He ain't that fast, but he's got some room. Try to get the stiff arm. Had no real choice. I wasn't going to outrun him. Inside handoff to Puka. Tried to make a juke move, didn't happen. Blocks are terrible on that, sadly. Pickens, I really don't trust uh, the beastiness that is his guy. And Preston gets the catch, only gains four. He goes for the pick out of position. They're telling me to, like, just lay down and go for the field goal here, which I don't know if I agree with. I mean, it's definitely a, it's a definite decision. Is it the good right decision? Probably not. It's the Calvin Austin route every day of the week. And he holds on, making it a fourth and two. I think he go for it. Once again, they got me, like, under center 
you know, in a situation where it's fourth and two. Like, what are, what are we doing here? Great job by Pickett. Didn't have anyone else open. I think it's it was worth the play. And that's a great catch by Fryer. Bad throw by Pickett. Pressure. Great decision for the pressure because I wasn't ready. Pickens, do I trust it? And they just gave it to him. Oh, my God. What is that throw? What a throw, man. That was, I mean, good job, Pickett. Good job by Highsmith there. God, we got to do whatever we can to get a quarterback. And I don't think it's Zach Wilson with the throw, with the uh, the under pressure in this game. Like, he would literally die. Like, huge hit. All it takes is a fumble there. His lineman is now injured. And good job by the D. Took a little while, but we got him. Fourth and 11. Now, he's not going to get the kick power or the kick arc dis uh, disappearing thing, is he? This guy does look a little close, actually. Maybe he will. Nope. He said he gets a full-blown punt out. I held right bumper. I ain't juke moving in this situation. To the outside, Najee. Stiff arm didn't really work. Gains about six. Another stretch, but he does have his, like, DB over there. Over-pursuing again like a moaf. Puka with a really nice run there. Gains about seven. Trying to bait it out. Not going to get it off as usual. <laughs> oh, my. We needed a yard. I figured he would be coming with the blitz. I should have probably went with a drag with Pickett, and it just didn't go. We've literally been just instantly pressured every play. Like, I don't know how he isn't winning by 50. And that ball should have easily gotten in there. That was <laughs> a little misleading, I'll be honest. No breakout for Fryermuth, but let's be honest. It is very, very, very hard to get dev ups for tight ends. 150 yards for an 83 speed tight end against maybe the best team in the entire league. Very close to, at least, specifically on defense. It's up there. It's definitely up there. And great job there by Edmonds to just keep up with that. He was the reason why that ball even deflected in the first place. We'll go with Edmonds, actually. Oh, that was to the running. I didn't even see the running back. Must have got trapped on his own guy. Man coverage in this look is brutal. Hopefully it's an inside release from Diggs because I can cover that. And that's Troy Pride, baby. What a move. Nice spins. All the way down to the eight. What a play. Of course, he's going to be bringing the pressure here. That's my fault. That's a terrible play by me. Literally just run a straight line. You're good. Run it to the left. Oh, come on. This guy breaks it. I'm sure of it. Don't throw the ball. But at the same time, you got room. Try to throw it up to Fryermuth. Not going to happen. Field goal time. As long as you don't turn the ball over, it doesn't matter. So, I mean, there definitely was a chance at a fumble, but as far as, like, an interception goes, it would have to be the unluckiest play of all time. Like, it would literally would have been the unluckiest play. Jeez, Mathis, you want to get out there? And this guy just drops it. Of all the BS things that have happened in his favor today, they drop that. Really. Really. That's the one he doesn't get. I'm going to use your Mathis. I want a pick if I can get a pick. Is that Fitzpatrick getting burned deep? Picked off. Wow. I was going to swat, and then last second I was like, I might be able to get this, and that's what I did. I got it. All right, GG to our opponent. What a disaster. We obviously made some insane user plays and still almost lost. Definitely a bit on my fault, though, for uh, trying to force it to Fryer a bit in that game. But I will say at the same time, you know, we were missing throws regardless. You know, Pickett came in. He definitely played better than Strong, but I don't know what to do. I really don't. Like, they're, they're all going to throw picks. They're all going to suck. I think it's just going to be a musical chair as a quarterback, which has been, uh, has been very uh, consistent from me. Let me say that. 
68 yards on five attempts from seven or five completions from seven attempts. Four for 16 from Carson Strong. These are the quarterback numbers that won us the game. Let that be known. Offense was abysmal. His pass rush was literally perfect. I, I mean, I, I I don't know what to tell you. Of course, uh, Calvin Austin didn't really get involved much, but he had that huge touchdown, which saved us big time. Uh, and we did okay against Diggs, surprisingly, which is cool. Edmonds with, like, the greatest game I've ever seen. Like, <laughs> three interceptions, a touchdown, and a sack. With 11 total tackles, four of them for a loss. If he doesn't win player of the week with that, I don't know what to tell you. Probably gets a break on next week, which is a lot easier to get than the freaking tight end one. Got a couple interceptions for guys we care about, too. Mathis, Troy Pride, Fitzpatrick, and then obviously the three from Terrell. And that, in general, will be it. Wow, we really... What was the time of possession difference in that one? Not that. Well, I guess I could have went from there from team stats. Uh, where are we at? Must have been like crazy. Yeah, 1140 to 2020. Nice. I would love to know the pressure percentage in that game. Like, we were literally pressured every play. Like, I want to look at plays where we got sacked and see how much of it was me just keying in on a scenario and how much of it was just us getting destroyed on the line. Like, here I was keying in on him, and it was a deep shot in fairness, but, like, he does, I guess he does bring uh, five, but Vaughn just destroys him instantly. And, of course, the wind-up. Yeah, I mean, I guess that is a pretty fair fumble, but, like, man, that sucks. Uh, what else do we have? Carson Strong sacked here. All right, so at this point in time, there is not a soul open. I, don't, I mean, I got a bridge to sell you if you think I'm hitting that to Calvin Austin in that situation. I'm going to get hit. I'm definitely going to get hit. Uh, and ironically enough, it's it's Fryermuth who's open. That's that's the only guy open on that play. There's a reason why Fryermuth had that big game, and he gets a lot of catches every game, and it's because he's by far our best option. Like, Pickens just doesn't separate. And, of course, a lot of it is the fact that, like, here, obviously, I'm forcing it. What's the situation? First and ten. Well, actually, I didn't force it because it was to... Tredavious, like at this point, this is what I see. I see inside leverage given up to a bigger wide receiver. I'm throwing with this yard of separate, well, maybe not a yard of separation, but he's got the inside leverage on him, and then, of course, he just outruns the hell out of him. And Pickens, who's 6'3", decides not to go for it. But Trey White with the one-hander, why not? Well, basically a one-hander. But anyways, uh, that is a failed scenario. I'm not going to click it just in case the game is glitched and, uh, you know, gives it to him. Then he'll get XP he doesn't deserve. I don't want to deal with all that crap. Uh, we ended up getting not 15 first downs. Once again, I didn't do us a great favor with forcing it to Fryermuth. Obviously, the team difference is just ridiculous, especially with the sliders we're on right now. This is, if you're wondering what the sliders we have on are, I, once again, I think they're going to change at some point, I would imagine, but... 30 accuracy for a QB, which normally doesn't feel like it's the worst thing. You know, Pickett's pretty decent, but obviously strong is like 70s, like low 70s. So he's going to miss a lot of throws, but 20 pass blocking. I feel like that's the worst of our sliders. Von Miller, while very good, doesn't win every single pass rush rep he does in real life. Uh, and he was against us. And James Daniels is the one that's playing right tackle. And with his kind of athleticism and his frame, he's basically like a Von Miller of offense. I know he's nowhere near as fast, obviously. He's not as talented. But as far as, like, if you're looking at matchups, you know, if, like, if you have, like, a six foot eight, 350-pound right tackle against Von Miller, it's like, okay, that guy's dead. But James Daniels is a smaller guy with, you know, some uh, agility to him. So he should match up better than most against Von, yet he did nothing uh, I don't think coverage is really doing great here as it seems like it's all about speed. You know, Calvin Austin burning people. If I wasn't so focused on Fryer, probably would have found him all day. But yeah, this is, uh, this is a tough matchup. I mean, if it wasn't for our defense, you know, taking the ball away and scoring, we lose that game. I mean, that is a tough roster. And once again, I was going to look at the abilities and I never did. But just looking at his defense, you know, like the offense we get is, is solid. He's got a lot of high overalls there. But like looking at the defense, you know, the left end is an 80 what six probably 86 overall uh, the right end i can't imagine oh yeah von miller actually 94 uh 82 left outs bad but 86 for a middle linebacker 85 for right out 93 cornerback one teron johnson's got to be 83 and then obviously kair elam is super fast 90s at the safeties you know it's just like 
for us, oh my god, I just freaking hit that hard. But for us to win that game, it was all on the defense. They uh, they were the only reason why we won that game. Obviously, you know, it wasn't for the defense. Would have never won. Would have never won. Also, got to say, without the pick sixes, might have had superstar for Ferrari. He's obviously having a great season, anyways. So hopefully, he just gets the dev up that way. But I haven't had a superstar tight end in the league ever, and I don't feel like I absolutely need one anytime soon, anyways. So. Uh, I'm kind of, you know, debating on what I want to do at quarterback. If it's a weak quarterback class, which I don't remember if it is or not, it's, I mean, there's five names, which isn't the best. Uh, I may make a trade for Zach Wilson. I, I'm there's So there's five QBs. How many teams need QB? That's the question. At least five, right? And I'm not going to get up there. So Broncos, I would say, are a team that probably needs a QB, but I don't think they're going to have a chance. Uh, so Broncos, but that doesn't count. So the Colts for sure. Washington, maybe. They have been using Howell, and I don't know how good he's been, but I would trade for him if he doesn't want him anymore. I would absolutely do that. Um, so that's two, unless I'm stupid, two three but I would trade for Ritter again if he was there three and that's it so far maybe four probably four probably five but Zach Wilson could be traded maybe six seven yeah I mean you kind of get where this is going it seems to be at least about eight to ten quarterbacks <laughs> eight to ten teams need a QB which is a disaster so I don't know if we're gonna be able to make a play like that that's uh that's pretty much the options, you know, Zach Wilson or maybe make some crazy trade-up since we have extra second-round picks. It's like, if you go for Zach Wilson, you're probably going to have to give up, you know, one of these second-round picks and maybe a fourth next. And if he sucks, you need a quarterback still. But if you wait, there's probably a good chance you can turn, you know, two seconds and like 30 into maybe top 10 pick. I don't know. I, I really think, as usual with us winning games most of the time in the league, uh, more often than not, it's going to be very hard for us to get a rookie quarterback. So I honestly think trading for one is the best way, maybe the only way to get one if you're us. So that might be the way. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. But Buccaneers next week, probably going to have a, an Edmund scenario if it actually is triggered by good performances because that's like an all-time performance. It's going to get player of the week, I'd imagine. But that's going to be it. Our quarterback continues. Uh, our issues continue. My complaining continues, which I'm trying not to do. This game, I will admit, more than ever, I was complaining more often than not because I was so anxious and I was feeling very pressured with that scenario. Honestly, with us like basically focusing only on that, I'm shocked we won. Once again, it was our defense that got us there, and his defense was really good. Don't get me wrong. It was, it was very hard to get past, but... If this was a game where there was no scenarios involved, I mixed the run-up way more than normal, which I barely even got my carries in at the end of the game, and we maybe make it a little bit tougher on him. But instead, I almost sold the game by focusing on Friar Muth's development trait, which I didn't even come close to getting, and could have dropped us a 3-2. and two. So glad to win it. GG to the opponent. You know, sometimes he was looking unstoppable. Sometimes, you know, he got baited, whatever it might be. Defense, he was actually pretty good with his user, whether that was Von Miller or uh, Tremaine Edmonds. Some pretty good users in there. It's just, you know, his offensive struggles definitely were the downfall of that game. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens next time we play, especially if I don't have a scenario that I'm completely focused on. But GG to him, uh, still has plenty of time to bounce back, and we are rolling at 4-1 and one despite our issues. So maybe trade for a quarterback, maybe trade for a new lineman, maybe can you know try to get the sliders changed, I don't know. But uh, definitely a lot of work to do. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, maybe leave a like, subscribe if you're new, follow me on Twitter, Channel PK, second channel PK plays for non-madden content, and that be it. Hope you guys come back for the next video, but until next video, see ya!